back in May, President Biden put uh, before the world a detailed um, proposed agreement on a ceasefire and the release of hostages. And the entire world rallied behind it. Country after country came out in support of that agreement. The United Nations Security Council voted 14 to nothing in support of the agreement. And the heart of it is incorporated into a UN Security Council resolution. Um, just last week, the President put forward a proposal with Qatar uh, and with Egypt to try to bridge the gaps that remain between the parties so that we could get agreement to what the President put out there a couple of months ago. Um, in a very constructive meeting with uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu today, uh, he confirmed to me that Israel accepts the bridging proposal, uh, that he supports it. It's now incumbent on Hamas to do the same. And then the parties, with the help of the, the mediators, the United States, Egypt and Qatar, uh, have to come together and complete the process of reaching clear understandings about how they'll implement the commitments. This process will proceed in phases. Um, a first uh, initial uh, ceasefire over the course of six weeks in which uh, hostages are released, prisoners uh, are exchanged, and negotiations commence on um, the conditions necessary for an enduring ceasefire. That's what, the, um, that's what the deal says. That's what's reflected in uh, what was put before the world and the world endorsed, the Security Council endorsed. With every passing day uh, that there's not an agreement, um, two things uh, can happen. One is, of course, uh, more hostages uh, can perish. Uh, and second, intervening events come along that may make things even more difficult, if, if not impossible. And we've, uh, we've experienced that throughout this process. So there's a, 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 the fierce urgency of now. That's what I think we're all feeling. And we do see this as the best opportunity to finally get this over the finish line.